Uh, so my question to you is, am I oriented properly? Um, it's looking right to me, but it was not looking quite right when I was um, setting myself up. And I have this deep distrust of, of Facebook and orienting me right. <laughs> uh, so whoever you are, please comment. Let me know. I'm trying to find myself on my laptop to see if I'm oriented properly. But there's a definitely a delay. Okay, let's see. So, hi, Linda. <laughs> okay, so does that mean that I'm oriented right? Yes, I'm right side up. Oh, hello from Arizona. Yay. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm the long way. I'm not sideways or anything like that. Um, I just, uh, I don't trust Facebook. <laughs> All right, did you see that at the beginning, my view of my trees um, my, in my tree house? Uh, I, I don't think so, probably, because you came on a little bit uh, after I showed that. So I'm just going to flip the camera around just for a sec and show you. So uh, there, there's the view of my trees in my tree house. I love my tree house. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to turn the camera around again. So, um, welcome. I guess I can officially get started. Um, thank you for being here. Hopefully some others will join in too. Um, oh, and thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the, um, the encouragement. Um, hi, Pam. Thanks for checking in, for coming and joining us. Um, welcome to my, really, my number two official Facebook Live uh, video. And... Uh, so I have a couple of things that I'm going to cover today. Always got a little personal update, not big, but just a little bit. Hi, Carol. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'm going to have a theme for the day again, like I did last time. And some quotes. I got some news and updates from on stage uh, in Orlando. And of course, I have a demonstration for you. So um, I didn't get it together to figure out a giveaway. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll change my mind as I go if I figure something out. But today's been kind of a busy day. It's kind of crazy. Uh, and I'm getting in the swing of kind of preparing for my Facebook Live. So um, anyway, let's see. So just a little bit on the personal front. Um, as you guys know, I was down in Orlando, Florida for the onstage live event and Stamp It Up's 30th um, anniversary celebration. And that was just a total hoot. So I mixed a little bit of pleasure with, um, well, with a little bit of pleasure. Because <laughs> on stage live, it's definitely all pleasure. But on the front end, um, my fellow demonstrator, Melissa, and I, uh, yes, two Melissas. Um, oh, I see it's cold where you are. It's pretty cold here, too, and rainy. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, so we mixed a little bit of additional pleasure, shall we say. I was there early on Wednesday. So Melissa and I went to Universal Studios and um, we went in one of the parks and it was just a total hoot. It's kind of amazing, the artistry of what they do there. And I'm not generally a theme park sort of person, but I really, really enjoyed it and had some fun um, with Melissa. Yeah, Melissa. Screen. <laughs> um, and we did that. And then on the last day, we went to the Magic Kingdom which was incredible, big, you know, huge cast. And again, I'm not a theme park person, so it was quite a, a treat. And it was also um, another fellow demonstrator's birthday, Amy Johnson. She was down um, for on stage um, with me as well. And so we went there because that's sort of a special thing that she loves, Disney Christmas stuff. Um, and I saw the best fireworks ever. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen any that were better. And it was just so much fun. Got pictures and video and everything. So that was just a blast. Um, another little tidbit on the personal front is it was my birthday this week, just two days ago. Woo -hoo. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my hip's doing well. I actually walked seven miles on that one day that we were at Universal. So I'm, you know, wasn't without a little bit of discomfort, but I'm mostly pretty good. So very happy and proud of myself. And then on my birthday, I also uh, getting back into my regular kind of yoga practice because I do yoga. I talk about that a little bit on my about page on my website if you've ever seen it. Um, and uh, one of the things I really wanted to do was a handstand. So I did an assisted handstand. Hoo -hoo. I was never uh, an athletic or uh, um, 
kind of kid. And so for me to find that as an adult in a plus 50 age <laughs> um, is just truly awesome. So I don't want to lose that ability. It makes me very feel very strong. And as I say on my website, I like inversions because it gives me a different perspective on life. And I think we can all use a different perspective sometimes. Um, and of course, I am actually it makes me also physically strong, which I love too. Uh, hi, Sharon. Welcome. <laughs> um, so that's my little personal update. Uh, on the business front, uh, well, let's start first with my, my theme for the day. So last week, we talked about uh, practice. I, I talked about how I've been avoiding Facebook Lives, and, um, uh, and I knew I needed to practice more. So I've been trying to you know, practice and committing to do one every week. Now, last week, I just came on live quickly from on stage, and next week is Thanksgiving. So it's ending up being every other week for a little while anyway. But under normal circumstances, it will be every week, and I'll have some updates. And then um, I'll also have a project demonstration, always a project demonstration, because I know that's what you love the most, <laughs> and I love it too. Um, so anyway, so last week was practice and consistency for my theme, but I wanted to expand on practice a little bit because um, practice, practice as a concept can be applied to all kinds of areas of our lives, right? So when I was a kid, I played the piano and my mom made me practice and I actually hated practice. Um, but practice is really important. And if you love something, then practice becomes a little bit easier, but it's not without its work. So um, uh, anyway, you can practice yoga, you can practice gratitude, you can practice crafting, all kinds of things that we can practice. Um, hi, Kathy, welcome. And we're talking about my theme for the day, which is practice. So um, one of the things that we talk about in yoga is that it is a practice. And I think from a, a philosophical perspective, it can just extend to so much. So it's like life is a practice. And I looked up some quotes about practice. And um, one of the ones that comes up most often is, is practice makes perfect. And to be honest with you, I hate that quote because I really think if a practice is really a practice, it's something, it's always a work in progress. You never get to an end point. And that's sort of hard, but it also means that you're um, constantly improving on yourself or getting better at whatever you're trying to work on. So um, I came up with a couple of other quotes on practice. Um, so uh, one is, practice isn't the thing you do once you're good. It's this thing you do that makes you good. So I think that's you know pretty cool. Hi, Mary. Welcome. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you didn't miss too much. <laughs> <clears throat> we're talking about my theme for the day, which is practice again, and sort of it as a thematic part of, of our lives. Um, so I think it's ridiculous to think about being perfect. And I think thinking of practice as an ongoing process and in life or with our craft or in anything we choose to practice, it just kind of gives you a little bit, um, you know, just a little bit more flexibility or leeway. Like, who wants to try to have to strive to be perfect? That's just way too hard. It's just not possible. Perfection is not possible. So I love this idea of practice and bringing it into our lives. Um, ah, yes, that's why they call it the practice of medicine. But you know, people don't pay attention to that because yeah, they are always practicing, but we don't want to believe that. We want to think that they're gods and goddesses <laughs> and that they have all the answers, but really they don't. So anyway, yeah, practice makes sense, Linda, um, in the context of medicine as well. So um, let's see. So what else? There was another quote that I found. Um, You'll never know what you can do until you stop being nervous uh, and allow yourself to try. So that sort of definitely applies to my Facebook Live thing because I avoided it for several months in there up until now, which now I'm facing my fear and I'm practicing. <laughs> okay, and another quote, um, the greats weren't great. And this applies very nicely to our crafty, artsy kind of perspective. So the greats weren't great because at birth they could paint. The greats were great because they paint a lot. Um, and so I feel like that applies to a lot of things and to our craft as well. So, um, and I, I feel like I would be neglectful, neglectful if I didn't also talk about the practice of gratitude because next week is Thanksgiving. And I think um, I just, um, I think it's so important to live a life that uh, where we're grateful for the things we have in our lives. I know I'm so grateful and have so much to be grateful for, including all of you who uh, choose to join me, because if you were choosing to join me, then there'd be no reason to be on here and there'd be no reason to share the craft. So um, I am super grateful um, to be here and to be able to craft and to be able to share it. Um, let's see. 
and this is like awesome. So this kind of totally relates to what I just said. So feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. So um, I hope you guys will remember that one. I think that's pretty cool. It's, I think it's important to say it out loud. So I'm grateful for all of you guys, um, whether you're here live or whether you join later. <laughs> Um, and incidentally, if you ever do have to miss one of these, which undoubtedly you will, um, I'll always, I'm always going to, there'll always be the replay. You can come back to Facebook and look at it. And, um, then I'm also posting it to my website with a blog post, uh, focusing on the project that I demonstrated as well. So you can always come back and look at it later and leave comments. Okay. So where are we now? So I want to talk about the practice of our craft because, um, I think, um, that there is some struggle in doing the craft, you know, for me. If you guys watch me in my videos, nine times out of 10, if I'm attaching a piece to another piece and I turn it over, I've got something stamped on the backside because I've practiced. And that's not likely the only time I've practiced. I probably have several other focal pieces sitting off to the side that I practiced on before I settled on the thing that I really liked. So um, uh, I think, um, you know, it's easy to kind of think, oh, it's easy for someone else to, um, to design, but it may not necessarily be. And it is something that I struggle with. And more often than not, um, I spend a lot of time figuring out my designs. Um, and occasionally it comes together super fast, but more often than not, I have to work at it. So um, our craft is a practice as well. So um, one of the things I wanted to ask you guys, and this is a, you know something to comment on. I, like I said, I haven't figured out a, a giveaway for this time, but hopefully just the commenting, the practice of commenting will be enjoyable and you'll get to hear the other things that people have to say as well. Um, so just comment and let um, us all know um, what is your biggest struggle when you sit down to craft? Um, is it finding the space, um, figuring out where to start, finding and deciding on a source of inspiration. It could be all kinds of things. So, um, uh, so list the things that, that take the most effort or get in the way of what I call your creative bliss. So um, when I create and I find something that I really love, I call that finding my creative bliss or my spark. And um, it doesn't always happen, but when it does, I just get so excited and I just can't, I just like want to yell it to the world and tell everybody and show everybody. Um, and so, you know, that amazing feeling may not come all the time, it might come in more toned down forms at other times. But anyway, so um, just to say, what is comment and let, um, let us all know um, what your struggles are when it comes to, um, to sitting down and crafting and what might you like to be easier. And then that'll help me to know how I might be able to support you and um, uh, in your, you know, paper crafting. Okay. So come on, people comment. <laughs> I don't see anything scrolling. Maybe it's delayed. Uh, anyway, I know I'm just like asking, put you on the spot and comment. Um, so maybe you need some time to think about it, but just um, let me know. Um, okay. So, and I just, I'm seeing a little notice on my phone that somebody commented on my video, my YouTube video. Don't you love that? It just pops right down. Let me know. So somebody's commenting somewhere. <laughs> All right. So more announcements, announcements from on stage. There were some really exciting announcements. Um, one of them that is that Stampin' Up! is coming up with a new Stamparatus case. Um, does anybody have a Stamparatus case, uh, actual Stamparatus? Hi, Allison. Welcome. <laughs> um, I have a stamp artist. We've been using it in my demonstrations. I have a project that's going live in a, um, there will be a video on Saturday. Oh yes. <laughs> Keeping your space clean and organized. I know mine gets to be total chaos before I actually, uh, when I'm creating. Um, so by the time I'm done, it's like a complete disaster. <clears throat> But keeping it organized to start is definitely a good place to start as far as making it easier to design and create. Um, so anyway, the new Stamparatus case um, is, uh, um, is coming out. It's available to demonstrators now. I bought mine a couple days ago. Demonstrators who were at on stage um, got to um, order theirs early. Um, and it's going to be available to customers on December 5th, which is not too far away. So that's pretty exciting. So if you do any crafting on the go or you just need something to protect it um, in your crafting space, that uh, Stamper's case will be awesome. You can ask somebody for it you know, as a birthday or a Christmas present. Um, 
So that's coming out soon. Another new thing is um, Stampin' Up! is doing away with wood altogether. No more wood mount stamp sets. Maybe you guys have heard that from other demonstrators or any, somewhere online, but that's like a really big deal. Um, people have not been buying the wood nearly as much. And so the market is not demanding it. So Stampin' Up! is going to stop offering it. So it's also the most expensive of all the stamp options. So um, that's, uh, you know, it's, I, I'm, I used to, I probably would have been sad a few years ago, but now I've really come to enjoy the, um, the kinds that cling to the acrylic block. I'll just have to buy even more acrylic block. Uh, so next on the agenda, another big announcement. Um, at on stage was that they're coming out with a new cling stamp. So I don't know if any of you guys struggle with um, having your stamps, you know, sort of fall off the acrylic blocks. Uh, I, some years ago, a couple years ago, I kind of gave up on putting the labels on the back. I live in a very humid place and my stamps wouldn't stick and it was just so frustrating, frustrating to have them fall off. So these new cling stamps have a new label on the back side. Um, and it's super sticky. I just tested one out this morning because they gave us some when we were on stage. We got all kinds of prizes and gifts. And of course, I'm going to show you what I got <laughs> in just a short little bit. Um, so I tested it out and it is super sticky. Uh, so I think there's not going to be a problem with it falling off the acrylic block anymore. And it is the cling stamps are red rubber. So if you really like the red rubber, um, you're going to still have that. And of course, the photopolymer sticks really well. So um, we won't have, we don't have a problem with those and really never have, at least not in my experience. Um, yeah, I know the claim. You can't wait to wait to order them. <laughs> um, so um, let's see, what else? So the, another big announcement was, was their Stampin' Up! is improving on their technology and a whole variety of fronts, and including um, sort of improving the customer experience on the ordering page of the Stampin' Up! website. So that's pretty exciting. And then there's some other technology-based things that they're improving. And um, that is an area that I, I'm very excited about. And a lot of demonstrators are really excited to hear they're improving in that area. So there's one other very exciting announcement that they shared. Um, there's going to be a, a super cool joining special um, during celebration starting in January, January 3rd, I'm pretty sure the date is. That's when the Occasions catalog, catalog goes live and the cele celebration begins. If you don't know what celebration is, um, it's a way to um, get free products with your purchases. So for every $50 in merchandise that you purchase, there are free items available to get stamp sets and other kinds of fun things um, that you can get for free. Now, demonstrators and uh, be, demonstrators who went on stage were ab actually able to uh, purchase product as a pre-pre-order, even ahead of all other demonstrators. So we got to order then, and we also got to pick free celebration items. So that's one of the great benefits of being a demonstrator um, is that pre-order option. And then of course, going on stage gives you the double, you know, um, benefit of getting to order even earlier than all the other demonstrators. So, um, so there's going to be an awesome special and, uh, uh, one of the options is going to include a craft tote, and it is the coolest thing. I actually ordered it. Demonstrators who went on stage were able to order it early as well. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's, it fits your cutter. It fits, you know, has lots of little pockets and pouches. Um, the only way that you're going to be able to get it is if you're a demonstrator or if you um, join Stampin' Up! January, February, March during celebration. So it's going to be an exclusive offer and there'll be more information on that and photographs and whatnot. So that's super excited. So my question to you, next comment <laughs> is, would you buy the starter kit to get that exclusive craft and carry tote? Now, I know you haven't seen it, um, but believe me, you're going to, you're going to want it if you do any sort of going anywhere out in the world with your craft. Um, so comment and let me know, would you, would you get the starter kit just to get that tote? Plus there's other benefits too. I think it's actually during celebration, you get an extra $50 in product with your starter kit. So it's a $99 starter kit and you're going to get $50 more in addition to that. And then there's also the option to get the tote. So it's going to be an amazing um, opportunity for people once celebration um, rolls around. Okay, so what else? Um, so we did get the occasions in celebration brochures and I'm, I can show you the cover, but I can't show you the inside, but I will show you some of the things that are inside because these were things that um, we got. Um, so this is the occasions catalog cover. And uh, I think there, yeah, there are butterflies on there. Butterflies, there's two really awesome um, product lines in this catalog that 
feature butterflies. I love butterflies myself, so I'm super excited about that. And the celebration catalog also has some butterfly elements of, and uh, lots of other really fun things. And I know it's backwards, but you don't really care about the words. You just want the images, right? And then this is the product purchase premiere flyer. So we got to order a bunch of different things. And I probably can't even show you that because it's kind of like showing you the inside of the catalog. Um, so, and then there's a flyer with details about the cling stamps and how to mount them and all that. It doesn't show you a whole lot in the picture, but that will be available. And let's see what else. Okay, so I have samples to show you. I have my swaps to show you. I do have a blog post on my site um, showing the swaps that I made and shared. And then also um, the swaps that I got back. And I thought I'd show you some of those swaps, but I don't want to take all day here. So I'm not going to show you all of them. But I thought I'd show you some of my favorites and maybe run through them real quick. So um, the occasions and celebration catalogs go live January 3rd. Um, if you buy the starter kit, you can view that catalog early. That, of course, means you don't get the special during celebration, but uh, you do get to pre-order and you'd be able to get occasions catalog products in your starter kit. Um, let's see a couple of other little things. Um, da, 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 let's see. Oh, yeah. So and then it goes live January 3rd. I said that already. Okay, so show and tell. That's really what you guys want, right? Show and tell. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm just going to bring some things over here. So we got, this is one of the new designer papers. It's a gingham. I don't know if you are into gingham, but there's the gingham in a whole bunch of fun colors. And then the back side is um, like a, a smaller pattern of the gingham. And I'm actually not sure what these colors are, but let's see. Just occurred to me, I don't know. Balmy Blue, Daffodil Delight, Grapefruit Grove, Highland Heather, Lemon Lime Twist, and Twist and Whisper White. So anyway, that's one thing. And um, they gave us this set, this Humming Along set, just beautiful. Somebody demonstrated using that Hummingbird with um, Brusho, if you've ever used Brusho. Uh, it was just beautiful with the Hummingbird. And that is one of the Kling stamps. Um, and then I got this from my prize patrol, Artfully Aware. It's a beautiful set. It was designed by um, uh, Janet Wakeland for reaching her million dollar sales milestone. Huge. Um, and what's your favorite, Pam? Tell me your favorite. <laughs> uh, is Gingham your favorite? Okay. It's always funny to try to figure out what people are, you know, what you said relative to what people are commenting on. So here's another one, Amazing Life. We all, I think we all got that. Yes, and it has this cute little cake in there. Some great sentiments. Um, Life's too short to say no to cake. So I have just a quick little story. So I've been trying not to eat sugar. Oh, the hummingbirds, yes. <laughs> and I went for probably about three or four weeks without any added sugar, at least that I was aware of in my food. But it was my birthday this week. And so my husband asked me if I wanted a cake. And I said, dang, yes. <laughs> so life's too short to say no to cake. So that cake is in the fridge. And I'm pretty much the only one eating it because my husband's traveling this week. Want to come over and have some cake, everybody? chocolate cake. It is so good to die for. My husband made it from scratch. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is another one. This is the fourth set I got. I think, I can't remember if this was the all present giveaway or how I got it. Incredible like you. And this also has some amazing, wonderful sentiments that I love. Hope your day is, is amazing as you. I'm uh, so glad uh, we're friends. I just adore you. And then incredibly proud of you. And then the images, I, that's going to be so fun to play with. I love everything that I got. Okay, what else can I show you? So one of the suites is called um, the All My Love Suite. Now we always do make and takes at the onstage uh, live events. And I know this is backwards. It says All, um, uh, all My Love Suite. Um, and this is the, these, we got all these pieces to make this particular project. Well, I couldn't help myself but to change things. Oh, thank you for the birthday wishes, Kathy. <laughs> so this is what I made. And I, you know, I just, I really changed it up a bunch. I kind of felt like this was a little too busy. But that's kind of the the, the pleasure of, uh, you know, getting some pieces and parts and then figuring out something that, that you love. So this suite actually has, uh, it's a big bundle. Um, well, two bundles, actually. This stamp set and the coordinating dies. And then there's a set of, uh, Valentine's and heart-shaped eyes, which are beautiful. And I toiled and tortured myself over how much of that to get because that was part of the product purchase premiere. So um, I'm showing you, they give us projects to make that are based upon the suites in the new catalog. And I think there are seven suites again. 
And as some of you know, I do, um, I do my taste of a sweet product shares and those are going to be coming up. So I'll be taking orders for those soon. So if any of these sweets that I'm showing you, I have four um, projects to show you that are based upon sweets. Um, uh, that you'll know that the, that product share the product shares are coming, and if you're not familiar with how I do it, it's uh, you get a little bit of each of the consumables in a given product suite. So a little bit of maybe designer paper, ribbon, embellishments. It depends on what comes in that suite. So it's a really nice way to get a variety of products without purchasing a whole pack of anything. Then you get to kind of try it out, um, and I just think they're the best things with my product shares. <laughs> if I might say so myself. So uh, stay tuned for that if you're at all interested in that. Um, it helps you spend a little bit less money and get a lot more variety. Hi, Marilyn. Welcome. <laughs> so here's the next one. So this is the second suite. It's called Classic Garage. And Stampin' Up! does uh, always try to do a masculine-themed um, thing. And I actually created it exactly as it was designed. I think my favorite um, element in this die set that coordinates with the stamp set is those gears. I really love the gears. But there's also um, a car image in the stamp set. And that's, you know, really, really cool, too. And I know people are always looking for those masculine style images. So um, that's the second one. The next one is Happiness Blooms. Um, this is uh, the project that they had for us to make. And um, this is what I made. So I changed it up a little bit. Didn't do the banner. Um, it's a little bit kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, bold, shall we say. This designer paper is super bold. And that's uh, one of the suites. This is, um, and, and we, we're selling, Stampin' Up! is selling this set of cards and envelopes that come in this big size and also a smaller size um, in the occasions catalog. So um, the card actually comes, you know, well, it's actually blank, but it's, it's blue. And then of course you got the coordinating envelope with the stripe on the inside and then the small, um, uh, the small size envelope and card uh, looks the same way as that with the stripes. Okay, so the last suite that I have a project to share um, for you is, um, the Gingham Gala. So that's the project design that they had for us. And then this is what I made. And there were several of us at the table that all agreed that we just needed to see more of this designer paper because it's so pretty. It's actually um, apparently needlepoint is very popular. Um, and uh, these days, more so than maybe uh, it has in the past or it's coming back. So this designer paper, if you can see, it has sort of a needlepoint theme to it. The, the stamp set has the same needlepoint theme. And if you see that image, it kind of looks like stitches. Um, and then this is actually dry embossed with uh, one of the dies that coordinates with this suite as well. So anyway, I, I love how that turned out. I love that designer paper. Okay, so those are those projects. Okay, what else do I want to show you? Okay, so my swaps were uh, this one, I did three different versions. It uses the Garden Impression Designer Paper. That layout might look very familiar to some of you <laughs> because it was a club project in the Tropical Escape Designer Paper. And then I also did one in the Joyous Noel Designer Paper. Uh, incidentally, if you are not aware, the Joyous Noel Designer Paper is has been discontinued. It was so popular that um, uh, it... Uh, it was on back order and so far on back order that Stampin' Up! decided they had to discontinue it. But um, that, those two, there's blog posts on my website for both of this layout with those other two designer series papers. And this is on um, in my, um, my recent post showing my swaps. So there were three versions of this. One of them was on the Mango Melody card base. And then this is my, uh, my other swap. I didn't make quite as many of these. This was also part of my Creative Escape Day and stamp -a stack Christmas card stamp -a stack It uses the Boca Dots stamp set, and I've also used the Stamparatus on this. This is the project that's going to be um, in my video on Saturday and in a blog post on Saturday. It's actually pretty simple, but there's a really, really cool trick that I want to show you. Oh, I see hearts. I love it when I see hearts. <laughs> Thank you, whoever did that. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to make me happy. Just give me hearts on Facebook. All right. So that's the second project. And if you want to see the details of how that one was made, um, come back on Saturday and check out my blog. Okay. What else? Um, oh yeah. And then my swaps. Where is my pile of swaps? Oh, I just realized I forgot to show you some other stuff. Okay. So uh, where are we on time? I don't know how long I've been on. I lose track of time when I'm talking. Um, okay. So I'm going to just show you these and I'm not going to worry about time. 
So this was one of my, one of the swaps I got. This was a, a fellow team member in the Love to Stand group. I just love this. Is that gorgeous or what? Um, and I'm really just showing you some of my favorites. This was definitely my favorites with that laser cut paper that's in the annual catalog. This one I love, love that coloring. I forget what the name of the stamp set is, like animal something. This was created by Amy Johnson. Love that with the waterfront stamp set in the winter scene. Comment if there's this particular one that you like, um, or if you like them all, that's good to you. Comment and tell me that. Uh, I love this one also. It's got that, the um, what is that called? The chicken wire? I can't remember what it's called. Um, here's another one, little bunny. Okay, I'm going to go through these really fast. Just chime in if I'm going too fast. This was created by Patty Bennett, my upline, in our team swap. And here's another one. This was created by Stephanie, who's one, a member of my team and somebody who is at on stage. And okay, this and this one I love the sponging. Okay, I love this one. I'm coming to the end. I'm trying to just move through quick. I love that one. Isn't that adorable with the little Santa? And here's our classic with the. I think it's with Lovely as a Tree. Maybe it's not with Lovely as a Tree. Uh, i trying to remember. Is that a new tree? Oh, no, it's Winter Woods. There we go. It's the Winter Woods. But I just adore that. I could make this kind of card all day long. <laughs> uh, this one's super simple. Love that. There's another one. Okay. And then last but not least, this was done by Melissa, um, who I mentioned before. She was, um, was the one who went with me to Universal. This is the string technique. It's so crazy unusual. You actually use a string to make that shape. It's super, super fun. If you want to see that, just, you know, comment and let me know. I'll, I'll do it on Facebook Live maybe. I'm sure she would love to have me share it. Okay, so those are some, just some of the swaps. I, I think I had about, I don't know, 40 or 50. Um, some people do hundreds of swaps um, at these events, but, uh, you know, I did what I could. Okay, so a couple quick things. They gave us this bag at on stage. And they gave us this little purse, which opens and has spots for all kinds of stuff. This was my little name tag. Um, they gave us these three little booklets. One has a calendar. One was just for notes. And one is like uh, grid paper, like for drawing designs out. And then they gave us this, which was an all prize giveaway, all prize giveaway. This really awesome tool um, case. And I'm, I'm seeing my blends alcohol markers in those little things. Or my pick, pick your tool, pick your pumping tool. You pick your tool, you pick tool. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you guys know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? If you don't, comment and let me know. And I'll show it sometime soon. It's an awesome tool. And then, of course, pens with the Stampin' Up! Stampin Up name on it. I love that. I love pens. Um, okay, so just one last word on on stage, uh, about on stage. My favorite, my absolute favorite thing about going to stage was being there with my team. I've been to many conventions and onstage events with Stampin' Up! And um, this was by far my all-time favorite. I was there with four of my team members. And uh, it just made it so special to be there with them, to share it with them. None of them had been before, so I got to kind of show them the ropes um, and share all the excitement of the announcements and the hoopla and the loud music. And <laughs> um, so anyway, just... Uh, I just, I love, I love my team. Yay. <laughs> if you want to be a part of it, let me know. I have details on my website. So um, I just have to show you one more thing. So I made my team t-shirts for this event, commemorative t-shirts. So it says 30 anniversary celebration on stage Orlando 2018. And then um, somebody, a fellow demonstrator helped me come up with this. So I have to show you the back of my shirt. So my team are called the Treehouse Chicks. Can you see it? That says, I can't tell whether you can see it. I'm a treehouse. Okay. I'm a treehouse chick. <laughs> so we're the chicks in the treehouse. That's my team. I thought it was really cute. So it kind of stuck. Whew. I have been talking a lot. <laughs> um, and of course that, um, oh, you love the tree and the moon. Yes, I do too. Could just, like I said, do that one all day long. Um, so anyway, my, my logo is new to this year with the launch of my new website back in August. So I'm super excited to have created t-shirts my very first time and um, to be growing my team. So let's see. Are you guys ready for a project? You're ready for the project? <laughs> okay, finally. Um, so if you ever come on to these and you really just want to see the project and you don't care about the announcements, 
<laughs> like I want you to listen to the announcements, but you can always feel free to jump forward and check out just the project demonstration as well. Um, Cause I know that's, you know, that's like the candy of it all, but um, I hope you'll join me for this other stuff too. Um, okay. So I'm clearing my space in front of me. I'm going to turn the camera facing down and what we're going to do is um, I guess I'll show you a few things first. Um, so I created a couple of projects and so I wanted to show you how to, how to do this. Um, one particular thing. So I had this vision. This is the galvanized paper. It's done with the tin tiles embossing folder. And I love that embossing folder. And I'd seen it on a bunch of things. And I just felt like it should be the focal piece. Like an embossing folder can be the focal piece of your card. It doesn't have to be a stamped image. It doesn't have to be a sentiment. Um, so I created this really simple card. I had this vision of using these um, lovely, what are they called? I know what they're called. It's written right here the frosted and clear epoxy droplets. This was a new thing in the annual catalog. So, or was it the holiday catalog? It might be the holiday catalog, yeah. Oh, hi Edwina, welcome. <laughs> you found me, yes. I love that you found me. Sometimes it's hard to find things on Facebook. So this was a post on my blog and I did color the lace here with um, my blends alcohol markers. And this, this actually, this um, ribbon starts as vanilla lace trim and I've colored it on a couple of different designs. I just love coloring it with the alcohol markers. It works really well. And I sort of created an ombre effect. And I don't know if you can really see that in this one because the gray doesn't show up so well. So I, I did this design. This was my original vision. And I have blog posts for that project you just saw. And then also this one. And then I did this one because I had a color challenge for the Color Fusers blog hub that I needed to come up with something and did this one. You can see the ombre on the ribbon a little bit better on that one. And uh, I just, I love this tin tiles embossing folder. So I just kept playing with it. Um, and my daughter had asked me for uh, some cards to make for her, to give to her. So I created this one. She didn't like the lace, but I just sponged that. So this one is, is sponged as well. Um, and then somewhere in the mix, um, a fellow demonstrator um, was, uh, looking at some things that I had made with my tarnished foil, if any of you are familiar with my tarnished foil technique, um, uses a lot of embossing and layers. And I had contemplated, how do I get color on my tarnished foil? Um, and uh, hi, Lorena. <laughs> um, so um, uh, she just, she came up with something and I can't remember her name. I wish I could remember her name, but I was so excited. So uh, I'm going to show you that. So on, when you're working with foil papers, they're a slick surface, they're non-porous. So I've typically used stays on and embossing powders because those will stick to those non-porous surfaces. So when you're using water-based ink, um, uh, like our classic inks, they'll just sit on the surface and rub off. They won't stay on there. So she came up with this actually incredibly simple but brilliant idea. Um, and so I'm gonna show that to you now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera. Hopefully, I'm going to stay oriented properly. Um, and I'm going to turn the camera facing the other way while I do it so you don't have to look at my chest and you can look at the outside view. The outside view. Okay, and I'm going to turn the camera facing down. Okay, and hopefully that's oriented right still. Does it look like it's oriented right? Okay. Um, Okay, so um, I could not help myself but um, dry emboss a couple of different embossing folders. So I did that step ahead of time. So I've done one just like the one you saw on that other card. Uh, let's see. Was it Kelly? I can't remember what question I asked. Did I ask a question? Oh, my gosh. I can't remember from one second to the next what I do. Okay. <laughs> You might have to comment again. I'm standing up so I can see your comment, but at some point I'm not going to be able to see comments because I'm going to be looking down at the work I'm doing. But um, anyway, so this is the tin tile. You can see I dry embossed it so that I centered those images across this way and then top to bottom so it'd have a really nice looking focal piece. I was going to do a couple of these so I could show you a couple different variations, but I couldn't help myself but do one with um, this embossing folder, which is now escaping me. I can't remember what it's called, quilted or something like that. That would be logical. If somebody knows the name of that, just comment and let me know. I always need help from my stamping friends remembering things. 
Um, and then there's this one, which is, uh, I also don't remember the name of it, Lovely Leaves or something. But um, the, the cool thing about this galvanized paper, which is different from the silver foil and the gold and the copper and the champagne, those are our foils right now, and the black actually, is that they have a white back. But this galvanized foil is, uh, has both sides are, have a nice um, shiny surface. So you can kind of mess with it and do um, whichever side you want to do. So this is really, that's called the debossed side when your image is pushed in. And this is the embossed side, dry embossed side, which is the image pushing out. And then you got the same with these guys. Okay, so I need a piece of paper to protect my work surface. Okay, so we're going to bring back in um, something that I used on this card. So I'm kind of giving you a little bit, um, oh, tufted, thank you, Linda. <laughs> um, this, this card used um, uh, an uninked, which I inked, uh, spectrum pad. So I kind of want to show you an uninked pad. Well, I actually, I have to go get it, and I'm not going to do that because that will take some time. So um, basically, this comes looking completely white, and then you take reinkers and you um, ink up each of those panels so you can see the side. Like when you first do it, you're going to see it's all white, and then it sort of slowly kind of drips down into the, the cushion thing, the pad. It's felt. And then when you're, when you're storing it, those little panels are pulled apart. And when you're stamping, you push them together. You don't want to leave them stored, pushed together, because the inks will um, bleed. The ink pads will sort of bleed into one another. So there you go. Thanks, Marsha. Hi, Marsha. Welcome. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm using that. I used um, this uh, um, Spectrum pad that I inked uh, to create this card. And you'll get all the details about that on my blog post on Saturday. But I'm going to leave it nearby because I decided... For this version of what I'm playing with today, I wanted to use the Spectrum Pad just for fun. So I wrote the names of the colors on a post-it note, very official, um, to, uh, so I'd remember what I had used. So Highland Heather Gorgeous Scrape, Blueberry Bushel, Pacific Point, and Balmy Blue. Um, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to start with this one, and I'm going to push these guys together. And the top panels are my blues. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub against my foil. And it should actually uh, show the darkest color on the bottom. And I'm going to actually do a little bit of stamping with it. And I'm doing it at an angle so the colors blend a little also. Okay, so there's that one. Um, and I'm, I think I'm going to do the other ones a different way, and we'll just kind of see what comes out. So I'm just sort of playing a little bit. So I'm going to do this one oriented this way. So I'm going to get all the colors. And I know, actually, I'll do the tufted for next. Um, and I'm just going to press on there. I can rub. I can press. This is going to be interesting. Hello. So... I'm not getting that end bit. So I can also, ooh, that's looking really pretty, isn't it? So sometimes you just never know what you're going to get. Now I'm actually using the embossed side. Oh, I love the way that's looking. You guys tell me what you think. Okay. That's pretty cool. Love that rainbow. I love this color palette. Just Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so now the leaves. When I was doing this one, like I love this embossing folder, I thought I'm doing it in blues and purples. I thought, what the heck? Caution to the wind. It doesn't have to be like actually like nature, does it? What does anybody think? <laughs> um, and I think I might have to do it this way also. Okay, what did I do? That's the purple. Kind of liking the way that's looking. So now when I did this the first time, I'm going to show you the example that I did the first time. I used just full-size ink pads, and I just took my full ink pad, and I rubbed it. OK. 
Okay, let's see if I can do that. Hoo-hoo. Okay, pressing a little hard so it's getting into the grooves. I don't want to push to go too much this way because then I'm going to merge the colors of the ink. Um, but I mean, that's kind of cool. I got a bunch of purple in there, but okay. All right, that's enough. So I'm just going to open that baby up and then close it. And then this is where the magic begins. I probably can't do all these because I'm going to be here all day. I might have to just show you the finished projects when I, uh, uh, afterwards. So I'm loving this one the best. I love this. Okay, I'm going to do this one. The other ones we'll just, I'll have to show you later. So I just want to point out that those colors look really brilliant on there. And that's going to change a little bit. So I've used clear embossing powder on there. That's the magic trick. <laughs> Not actually that much magic though. <laughs> it's pretty logical, right? Because I have the ink on the surface. If I don't put the embossing powder on there, it's just going to rub right off. But with the embossing powder on there, once I melt it, um, and I'm going to go ahead and do this on camera just so you guys can see, um, it's, uh, it's going to fix it onto that paper. So here we go. I really want to do them all. <laughs> just so that we can see what they look like. But, so you see how it's a little bit more muted color-wise than when I, before I put the clear embossing powder on there? I don't know that there's a way to get that color super brilliant, but it's still really pretty, I think. Okay, so just to compare, uh, you see how the, the color on, on the leaves is a whole lot more brilliant than the color in here, but it actually, the color actually came through pretty well. So there we go. So now I'm going to show you the finished project that I did um, with the tin, the tin tile. So that was the one with tin tile. And in this one, I used navy blurry bushel and balmy blue and I used the deboss side and I didn't do that on purpose oh somebody likes it yay thank you for the heart somebody um, but on the back side I had done um, uh, some different colors I'd incorporated some of the purples but I didn't really like it that much uh, I did include a photo of that on my blog post um, that will come out on Saturday was it Saturday no that'll come out tomorrow <laughs> um, the blog post associated with this Facebook Live, but um, I think it turned out pretty, pretty, pretty either way. So you can imagine now that one on there, and I'm seeing like little itty bitty rhinestones on each of those little spots of tufted or something of that sort. And I'm not sure how I would do these guys, but that's pretty much the same. So you get the idea. Now let me show you one other thing or two other things actually. So th this one actually came first after the, I saw this person's idea about adding color. So I did this one, which um, sort of is like a patina. Um, it's got some, what is the color? I think it's balmy blue actually. Is that or mint macaron? I think I used mint macaron because I was trying to get this sort of greenish tone into the metal. And then, you know, this is a bit of a variation on tarnished foil because I put the mint macaron on there and then I did some Versamark with copper embossing powder. And then I used our lovely copper trim and spread it out. You can really shape that copper trim. So this is one variation on, you know, getting color onto your foil paper and then heat embossing it with clear embossing powder. So I did the same thing on this one, just a few additional steps. And then there's one other I wanted to show you. And then I actually did sort of more of the tarnished foil look where I added some black to the galvanized foil before I dry embossed it. And then I added the mint macaron and then did my um, copper embossing powder. So that's my other creation. 
with adding color to my foil. So the endless possibilities. Um, and so these ones, I was thinking I would play around with uh, a different kind of design and maybe incorporating in some of the purple since I used the spectrum pad. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna do a little quick layout and then see what we think. So if I did the same kind of layout that I did on the other one, kind of play with my purples or my blues or something, and then something like that maybe. So just playing. Might need more, more of the blue in there. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? It's a work in progress. Um, I don't think I'm going to commit to it now, though. I need to get some clear embossing powder on this one so it doesn't dry. Okay, I'm just going to do that. So um, I'm just going to set that aside. I will include photos on my blog post of this one finished. And I'll probably do this one also. I might need to add more ink on that one. It needs a little something, don't you agree? <laughs> it's kind of a little, you know, plain. Um, okay, so what else? Um, that's kind of it for my demonstration. I'll finish up the projects and then share, um, or at least the focal pieces. And um, so I guess I want to just leave you with uh, uh, another opportunity to comment and just want to know what are you going to practice this week yourself? Like, what do you want to focus on in your life? Because we are, you know, you want to practice gratitude or practice crafting. Uh, that sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> Um, and just comment, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And, um, you can comment on anything else I asked about, uh, earlier in the Facebook live and I'll be back, not next Thursday cause it's Thanksgiving, but the week after that, which is Thursday, um, November 29th with of course more, more announcements and updates and another fun project. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's Facebook Live, and I look forward to seeing you back again. And thank you so much for joining me. I love having you here. And I'm sending hearts out to you guys, even though I can't do that from, from my end. <laughs> so uh, have a great evening, and we'll check in sometime soon. Bye.